This man is the most... Hello, hello, everyone. Hello, hello, we're back. These are people that you might not have seen ever or you've seen before. We start from the absolute left. We have Laka, who works on the project of the office. So what do I do? I'm a chief of project. I follow the work of the entire team on the project of the porting of the office to Unity. Knowing very well, knowing very well that for a very long period of time she's been working on uh, this team right here. So we'll talk to you about Unity in great detail and reassure you that because of the lives that were spaced out, you might have th thought that that's it, it's finished, the project is dead, it's going to be delayed or anything. None of that. And for the second person that is with us today, today is uh, Lorco. What do you do? So I am artistic designer in Dofus for a very long time. I've started in the old retro and now we've moved to 2.0 and now I'm moving to, um, to Unity. And even back in the time you've done pretty much everything. And this is a hallmark of everyone who has been here for a while. You've touched everything. And I'm Papino. I'm a um, producer of both Dofus's Unity, Retro, and the one, the current one, Dofus 2, except Dofus Touch. Today we're going to talk to you about some big, big topic about Unity, which is the ADA, the artistic direction that we will take. It was very important for us to go back and talk to you about this because this was a community important topic. And we'll go back to the fight aspect of it and we'll show you many many cool things that we've prepared for this live to show you all the novelties everything that has progressed and evolved over the years but to talk about the ada the artistic direction first we will talk about what is it first what is an ada i show you the expertise uh, we will show you the aca as well who's the expert here in um where are we at with it? What do we do? Where the, where's the progress? We'll give you everything. And at, at the end, we will talk about the design, the Cara design, I don't know what that is. What are we producing right now? What are we finishing up today? What you will get between your hands very shortly. So I think um, without, without any further ado, ACA, what is happening? What is, why, why are you doing this uh, Unity porting? So it was techn for technical reason to begin with. First of all, Dofus was made with ActionScript 3, which is a Flash client, which was a bit old and are rather limited in terms of functionality. And we've reached the extreme and edge of what we could do with it and we were stuck. Plus the fact that the uh, motor, the Flash motor, doesn't benefit from the um, tools, the technical tools, so you have, uh, for example, if you have a CPU that has many cores, Flash is only using one. So the more cores you have, the more you honestly should be benefiting from advances, but that's not the case with Flash. So we decided to upgrade and move to something better. So we've decided to port into something that is technically better, that allows us to do more things. So it's not really just a technical porting. We've come back on all of the things that or new and that we're allowed to change now. So I no longer can hide behind the plant. <laughs> so it's not just a technical evolution. Because the motor, the new graphics motor, offers many more possibilities than just the design and beauty aspect, then we're going to benefit from all of those things, like animations on the map, first of all. And from a character's point of view, we'll be able to animate some of them without so in a way that you could have more than 12 characters in a map and not lose your uh, PC performance. <laughs> and right, and so what do we win? What do we gain? We've seen what we can gain in the way we can animate and produce, but as you've seen in the past, we have seen the foundation, like classes, for example. We were able to go back and redesign them from scratch. And they've evolved a lot over the years, classes. The porting from uh, Dofus 1 to Dofus 2 was a really long time. Both of these people have known it, they've worked on it. 
it has been a really long time and even the characters since the very first version to the one that we have now has evolved so much we had 12 classes when we moved to Dofus 2 now we have 19 like the rogue for example the Fogonaut and going back on the classes those of you who have followed the unity lives we've done since last year's we've showed I reckon about six to eight classes and in essence we're showing you the advances in our classes what the tools are letting us do for those but where are we at with the unity port in Laka? so we're reaching the end <laughs> it's really good because the goal is to release it eventually you know so to go back on the big steps of the porting we had a very first phase which is technical porting so that every functionality on the dofus client that exists works so for for a while now this has been the case but now we've gone to the second phase which is the optimization we're enhancing the existing functionalities so we're redoing all the interfaces at the same time graphically but also ergonomical functionality so things that we have looked over things that we've completely changed because we were unsatisfied with them we will do a live later to uh, later on this summer on the fights and how they work we have loads of things to show you how the fights are going to evolve and at the level of the um, interface integration into the rest of the game we've got two three in three uh, interfaces to finish and we know we've got so many of them we didn't realize the more you enumerate the more you find and also there were some interfaces that are completely gone we've realized we'll just do some cleaning up because these are old or unusable or so we've qualified this move as onboarding so when you come and choose the server the class the character the color and things like that in any game production you do everything and then you go back to the beginning at the end so what we've done is we've realized we are at this phase now because we're working on the very first onboarding phases and it's a good sign so we've done all the maps all the characters and everything so on the level gra on the graph level we've got the map side that is evolving quite nicely we won't have a hundred percent of the maps for the beta <clears throat> but we will have a lot of interesting content uh, we will be aiming to uh, so the maps will be accessible but the decors but the decors won't be up to notch uh, but the idea I, in the beginning is to have all the dungeons um, ready from day one because that's the main activity of the game but so that means we've left some maps that weren't a priority that were a bit secondary not not used much and we've left those for last and also the characters as well which is something that is really important graphical level all the characters are done at the level of their animation there's three classes globally that s to finish up so the rogue uginak and also modes all of the others have been animated and already so we've benefited from this time that we've had to um get them up to speed because of the fights i just reminding you guys that the porting is not just a copy paste the animations of classes fights and spells we've started from completely zero um uh, because um, we've realized there was a discrepancy between the animations and everything and the actual stats and characteristic of um, the spell themselves and also we've realized the vfx were a bit too old We've loved them because they've marked us at a certain point in time in our life. But when we've looked at some of them, we just got a bit pained. It was a heartache to see how old and debilitated those animations and VFX are. So we've looked over everything and redone completely from scratch. And the idea while redoing the animation, the idea is what are we trying to do and tell with this um, spell? What are we trying to tell as a story? What are the effects? What are the desired things with it? Which wasn't necessarily the case earlier. And one last thing, which is a big, big topic, it's uh, item. There's two, two big things, not just one. We have items, which is more than three. We have more than 3,000 objects that you can equip, which are a shield, a hat. So once you start the port in, you look at, you look at the, you remember you have to do items as well. And then you see the list and it's like 3,000 and you have a little tear that drops. <laughs> so... 
um, when you look at some items, they weren't on the best perspective. They were done over the years by um, design graphics that were old. They weren't necessarily adapted to every class. Some of them were just completely old and not fit for perfect. So we had to redo a bunch of them to bring them up to speed for nowadays and today. And the last one is emotes where I were trying to, the idea is to have them all ready for the better. They're not necessarily all going to be ready for the better, but we will absolutely try and have as many of them ready as possible. And the idea is to touch classes, touch cards, uh, NPCs, mounts and things like that. That will be something that will come as, as we go. So for the NPCs, we've got some old NPCs that will... Uh, for the Tony? So there will be uh, so there will be some NPCs that won't be animated as much as we would like. We will prioritize the more important NPCs that we see the most, that we interact with the most, versus so the in essence what she's saying is the Astrub one. Astrub Zap ones and the um, dimensional ones will be prioritized as opposed to the Koalak ones who will be looked after. We'll also look at the NPCs that are used with the classes to distinguish them and give them a new identity. And there will, what will stay is uh, mounts on top of which the character goes on top. They ride. So there are some really old things that work, um, that no longer work. Some new things that work perfectly, like the uh, Rhinitals, they've been created later on. But the Drago Turkey, for example, is something that will need to be completely reworked visually. And these are things that will happen as we go over time. So if we were to summarize globally the Unity port in everything we've said today, we are towards the end. It is happening. We had presented during the Crows Mono that the beta will be happening in August and the release on December. We're still on this timing and we will keep it. And you will also have the opportunity to test the um, the Unity um, for the first time in the Japan Expo, which is happening next month, July. And now, and the convention as well, which is happening. Uh, is there any hype? Have you seen the news? Is anyone hype? Is that something that we expect? Yes. <laughs> Are you guys hyped about it? We've been trying. We've been biting our lips to not say anything. It was really complicated not to release this hype. Uh, I know usually that we will have the place, the question of where will it happen. It will happen near our um, um, our offices, which is around um, Roubaix, about 20 minutes from Lille. We are really excited to see you there. The date is on the trailer, so you have all the information already out, thankfully. So we will talk to you about the convention very soon as well. The return we've had was perfectly exciting. People have been waiting for it. When was the last one again? It was, it was in San Solver. I don't know what that is, but it was ages ago. Now, transition to what is a the what is the DA the, the artis artistic direction? What is it? So um, we've been copying the. Um, We've brought you the person who can answer these questions uh, globally. We will go back on what is a DA, what does it do, is it just a graphic change, the terms that we use basically. Let's go back over everything. So DA is artistic direction. It's what we usually find in a graphical universe. It's, um, it's what brings coherence, it's what brings... So the graphist will work on everything that is the elements, the graphical elements that aid, a, that make a video game. So the artistic director will work towards creating a coherence between all the little elements that make the game generally. So I'm saying now, everything that is illustration, graphics, icons, spell icons, everything that is level design as well, the card design, animations, everything has to work together with each other. As we've said, the artistic direction is something that has evolved over the years, uh, especially from uh, the porting of 129 to 2, 
but also during 2.0, it's not something that has stayed fixed, that hasn't evolved for 15 years, something that has con continuously evolved and progressed. So we've mentioned in earlier, there are some classes that have come up after 2.0, who have many changes uh, since then. Uh, even during the, the technical aspects of the level design, we had new tools that we could work with, so we've used them over time. But we've also always had in the back of our mind keeping some sort of coherence between classes and things like that. Uh, but we still manage to evolve. So let's, for example, take class uh, characters the way you know them right now. They're not all the same proportions, identical. Uh, like, you know, the Zellor is smaller than the eye of. Can we, can we, can we start using some uh, visual guides just so we can see? So you have uh, changes in the character aspect ratio, which ties into animation itself. So the bits, the components of a character uh, change differently. And we have 19 classes and each one has two sexes and each one of those sexes has multiple body parts. So everything that animates within the character when they're casting a spell and things like that, they have been animated and changed towards the spell. But also we have the emotes that are animated the same way for all classes. So emotes, same for all of them. But spells are unique, and what we found is when you animate for things that happen for all of them, you get stuff breaking. <laughs> In essence, if you make something animated, you have to make it animated for 36 classes, because you get 2 times 9. Uh, let's go back on the evolution of classes, because uh, since 2008, a lot of classes have evolved massively, and you know that in 2021, we have shown you during the Japan Expo a first theoretical direction that we wanted to take and i'm not telling you anything it was a an a da that was stolen that was licked that had so many reactions from the community and so we wanted to show you the final version that we have internally right now in 2024 that has taken a lot of your feedback on board that continues to progress and that will continue to progress uh, depending on um, the returns that we get from the beta and what we're showing you right now and principally it's also uh, the 2021 version that has been leaked was not stamped. It wasn't a final version. So maybe the guys will explain it better. But we have been flexible and we continue to better constantly. And your feedback helps us achieve that continuously. Right. Effectively, on the characters that you're able to see here on the screen in front of you. Effectively, we've listened to your feedback and we've uh, fattened the legs, we've grown the head a bit more, we've added more details on the character. But the idea of this um, graphical redo is to um, remove as much shadow from the body parts as we can. Uh, the joints, um, we'll try to enhance them so that they work, so they can be animated in all areas, in all directions, depending on spells, obviously. And try and reduce the graphical incoherences on things that they share. And also simplify globally the design so that they have, that, so that they are smaller. Because you have to think about the Unity client will also later on be ported on mobile. And we want to gain visibility there as well. So we're working with that in mind. We've seen what touch looks like. And some things are completely invisible. You can't see them. But if you shrink them to the size we have gone with right now, they will work later on when we put them to mobile. So we have taken into consideration multiple aspects of what is happening. Where are we going with this? And try to pack everything in here. So... We've done the the coup the skeleton, so cutting of the skeletons of the shape, uh, the head. So we've made uh, parts individually that we've cut. So for example, when you equip a hat, so you should be able to see the head still after it. Um, and still see the details about the characters that you pick when you start, like the hair shape, the facial things. You don't want to lose all of that the moment that they've put a hat on. And also expressions. We don't want you to lose all these tiny details, which are marvelous in Unity, the moment you equip items. So we wanted to go back and explain something about the new level design. So for Flash, for example, 
uh, let, let's show you the difference between flash and the more direction we're taking right now so you can have an appreciation of what we have to work with so on this slide right here what you can see on the character in 2008 you can see that you have lights that come from all directions there is no lighting logic so we've asked the light comes now moving forward light comes from the top of the head and that in lights it up in a logical manner so the the character is clearer at the top and then darker towards the end to show volume and isometry in the character design so this is the new logic that we've worked with which will be used in every work that we will use later on so beyond light we also have the question about matter texture that we could bring to characters items and things like that so these are things. We'll just give you references about the things that we've added. Uh, we had to standardize these things uh, so that we have the same tools that we're working with across everything. This, this is a small example of the matters that you can see made. So metals, wood, and other things that you can see here. Also, what we said about the sporting, one of the biggest interests that we've seen in order to gain in fluidity and um, production globally is to rework the entirety of the animation. This is what we call the gabari, the foundation, the uh, foundational skeleton that we call. I'm really sorry about, uh, I'm, so, I'm sorry, technical, can you give us the, uh, the violin emo, please? This shows very quickly, we've added this in last second. This is to better explain. You can see right here, like motion cap, mocap. We have points, pointers, so that the character can achieve the motion and the emote. Even though you have just a tiny little points that move, you can see that that will later on turn into an arm and things like that. So each one of the container, these white dots, corresponds to um, pointers in the, the arm, the hand, the head, the neck. So this is how it works on 2.0, a classic emote. But for, for Unity, we're keeping the same principle. We want content containers that you can equip on a skeleton of a character and then you have the emote. And here what we wanted to show you is examples that we've taken in the game with beautiful videos of dismembering. <laughs> so we don't realize it nowadays, but when you start from the current molds that we have, the body, the skeleton, when they do an animation, we have a lot of parts where it's just really not working, like here. The hand is no longer in its perspective. The, the, the hand is not in its right perspective. The joints do no longer have the same proportion. And some things just do not work. And it creates things that are not fluid, ugly animations that do not put the character design and everything up in value. It doesn't bring it forward. And this is something we've been work, working on for a decade and more. If you can show us the next slides, please. We've done a little recap a little family photo that shows all the problems we have actually with the emotes for example this is not redone these are the classical emotes that you have right now in the game you can see problems uh, hands that are severed uh, feet that are no longer part of the whole body uh, you can see we don't have this example but the any has nothing under here, you can see that they've got nothing under their pants. It's just, they're not similar. They're not level. The anatomy is weird. The Fogonauts have big ass hands. That shouldn't be happening. It's not the same proportion. It should be the same for an IOP and a crow. It's just weird. The whole thing is weird. It doesn't work when you have the same um, skeleton and you animate it, but they have different proportion. It just does not work. So we've gone back and looked at each class individually and we'll show you the results in a bit. It's really mind blowing what we've been able to achieve when we've done this one little change. The other limitation that we have earlier, we've talked about lights, which is the management of shadow. We were extremely limited with the tools that we had because of the mold that we were using that you couldn't have light moving around and animate while moving the characters. Um, so on the first season we had uh, shadows that were cut like this. Um, 
even in movies and series we had the same problem. So what we've done now in the Unity skin is we have um, gradients that are darker underneath the clothes that will get that will get clearer all the way until the joints uh, when the light interferes with it and this will be carried when you have an animation you will see the difference in the animation phase uh, so we, since we've redone the body parts we've redone the skeleton so what has happened is we have better control over the animations. Let's have an example here. So we've even started with the uh, shoulder pads, for example, in Dofus 2.0. It had to be a big ass hack that we've had to attach on the arm rather than the shoulder because we didn't have something as a shoulder. Whereas now the shoulder pads and items will be animated on the character because they're separate entities right now. Because now you have hips, you have an ass. <laughs> so now you have more body parts to work with. Instead of attaching new things on existing parts, which was looking weird when you animated it. Now you can just add an extra part and then animate it on its own. As you can see here with the, the, um, the dress. So wh whereas in the past we would say just fuck it, let's just add it to the game, it's not going to look good. Now we can have animations on the items themselves and add them as a separate thing which will bring a beautiful aspect to the animation which will be brilliant so you can rediscover the beauty of having your character the items on it and things like that the other limitation with um, so for example if we wanted to add a full-on costume an integral we had to go over all of the emotes and make sure that they work with this costume and that's why we added three and then completely stopped <laughs> but now as you can see with the new skeleton and everything we'll be able to reproduce and make things that we've stopped ourselves from doing in the past because we couldn't but now we will be able to do them for example the integral costume the first one we want to show you as an example is the Elysale one for example we have a visual guide that will uh, show we will show you in a bit about this <coughs> I think we've been shortchanged because the computer has gone to sleep and you need the password <laughs> but the idea now was to transition into an example on what that will look like on the client it please do not go to the next slide we still have a little moment here <laughs> hey thank you for the follow <laughs> and boom <coughs> we'll wait a little second in order to pick the server and everything and we should be all right And the idea is to show who those of you have missed the uh, previous lives is to see what it will look like on your client when you boot up Unity at home. Classic live tech problems. <laughs> All right. Let's remove the map. You can also already see. Um, I might have I might have spoiled you on this map because we. I, we've never shown this before. Maybe there's... Uh, this is a little spoil just to show you a why me that has not yet been seen so far. Let's go back to Pandala which you've seen before. It's a bit busy here so let's go to a different map where there's less people. Right, what did we want to see? What did we want to show here? Ah yes, we wanted to show first of all that the character... Characters breathe. So we have an idol, I don't know what that means, integration. We tried to go a bit light on the idols. I wanted to specify on the idols, I don't know what that means. We still have the character that is stood upright. We will have breathing. That's what we call the idol, idol, not idol, the idol state at peace. <laughs> As you can see, we used to have glasses with their hands on the side. We will add a little interface where we'll have we will add different idols so that the character could have a sequence of idols just so you can show off at the zap even better to enhance your zap sitting experience let's go <laughs> so the characters will be a lot more mobile and uh, animated than just stood there with their, their their hands on the hips so don't worry about it every class will have its own adequate posings so 
the fact that we've started to touch everything brought back the notion of idol when the character is not moving there's still an animation that continues to play where they're breathing and it brought about the um, question of transitional animation so when you transition from a position when you stop walking or when you start walking or you start running which we didn't have before these are transitional little animation that fluidify the game for you you won't necessarily notice them but you will still get the impression that whoa this is a bit more fluid as you can see here and and this will still happen even with too many characters on the um, the other thing which was obsolete which were the fish things oh so fish will start moving let's zoom in this is spectacular to finally have a camera that works like it works uh, to show that when you zoom and de zoom also just that little fact is also fluid and beautiful in interaction yeah so everything is just beautiful. The, we've already shown you the animations of uh, the waterfalls and things like that. But again, this is why we wanted to reassure you on the Unity portage, porting. It's still set for August for the beta and also for December. Everything works. We're debugging. We're still working on the enhancements and everything. And we're still on time to release it by uh, August and then December. The work mode so we could leave this one for those of you that have multiple uh, screens you can take your interfaces you can expand your card and put it on a secondary screen uh, so you will be able to customize it however the hell you want so if you have two screens you'll be able to move all the interfaces into the second one and just have your player on the first one for example so unity allows you to make a modular interface if you want to just remove all of the interface and just have your fucking game you can do that this is really cool <laughs> so if you say i'm farming right now i don't want any distraction i want to get rid of everything you can have a profile an interface profile that you can activate for a game mode one for coliseum one for fights one for farming and things like that i wanted to remind this because now we can tell you more things as we approach the deadline but this is what we're trying this is one of the biggest advantages that we found that we have with unity we're also working the quality of life aspect of the game as a whole not necessarily just the technical aspects and things like that on top of it of course and it is pleasing us so much oh let's go the other thing is look at this npc for example he's not animated because he's not moving but it will allow us and this is something that they've told us yesterday when we were um, preparing the podcast i know this you don't know this but you will figure out about, you will find this out now look at the um, look at the conversation he's spoiling well we're spoiling we're saying now so new npc dialogues all have been reworked um can we look at the somebody please remind me at the end uh, if you can please remind me to tell you about uh, the dialogues i've got lots to tell you about it so these are things that we've added about the porting uh, the optimization thank you or um so this is a change that is more charged and packed than everything that we've had before it is fluid and everything but it will be able to get and become a lot more fluid than it is right now so right now as it stands the fact of being on unity we have possibilities of optimization that just not exist to begin with in flash and right now we have a team that is doing great work on it it's one of our favorite preoccupations uh, so that you have a client that offers you the performance that you want from gaming and this is already pleasing as we say um Uh, we've stayed on something a bit basic on the transition. Um, let, let's see if we can find that works and then we'll add it. Remind dialog and PC. All right, sorry, I had to type that one to remember it for later. Uh, have we, shall we do everything or shall we go to weapons now? I'll leave you the choice. Shall we, where, where were we? We were talking about some enhancements and everything, but shall we show the animations later on no, i think we'll, we'll, well let's show the animation later on and show a different topic right now even though oop, even though it will be rather quick it's something that is dear to our hearts 
the weapons right now have graphical limitations. I'm already thinking about the Crocobeer, which is massive. So in 2.0, we've designed them with a frontal view. I think we have a little slide on this right now. Right, let's have a look at them right now. Uh, top left, you can see a weapon, 2.0 weapon, looks like this. It's a frontal flat view but now we have two views on every weapon so you can so you can see the top of the weapon and the bottom of the weapon which will be better when it comes to the animation uh, because in the past you only had one view we call it front view um, uh, we have about 900 weapon and so th they all have been reworked. Uh, I'm not asking you, can you just remind me at the end, if possible, to talk to you about the dialogue. I have something to add on top of this. Um, so we have used the time for Unity to go over everything and the weapons was one of the biggest thing that I wanted, that we wanted to go over. It, every time you use a weapon, you always have the same view. You don't know what direction the character is looking and stuff like that. Also on emotes, when you use show weapon, it just looked f funny as hell. Same view all the time, whenever they were out and everything, right. In the middle of fights, uh, positions and everything were wonky you couldn't tell which character there's a lot of things in essence to ameliorate and enhance when it comes to weapon and the last point before we go on move to classes is the expressions i know it's something that is like about 14 years that we've played dofus 2 and we got news to the fact that your character does not have a single expression we get used to it so really, we had the impression to have a figurine on Office 2.2. So uh, even even toys were better made because sometimes they had some mobility on the eyes and things like that. So your characters were unexpressive whenever you used an emote. It was a fixed face throughout all emotions. All the expressions looked the same. So now we have gone over every animation and we worked the facial expression so that your character is more um, animated than alive. So even with the attack animation, like if it's pulling a bow and something like that, on top of the whole body being mobile, now it will have a face animation that will change from a leak pie to a weapon to... And for example, with paint, something like that, you can see the character very scorned and focused uh, that brings about some life to the character, whatever it is doing. Aim, emote, fight, casting a spell is overall better. Uh, so we'll have a lot of expressions that are coming to the game that will enhance your experience of playing your own character. So we've looked at an example and we'll show you what other things we've added. It will be something that will enhance, better, get more diverse over time, which is a feature that you will be able to discover right now. Uh, for the amateurs of role play, you will love this because uh, it opens so many possibilities. Uh, this is something that we find really, really, really cool. Uh, we've talked about this very, very quickly, but the idea is we could add a mood in the interface when I, I'm not happy generally I could add a mood to my character we can do this now in the guild but now the character will be able to live it if you're angry you will be able to make your uh, f your character live the mood outside the fight shall we go on the big topic the big big topic which is the 19 classes I know you've been waiting for this We've shown you a little bit in the beginning. We've shown you four very quickly. And you have been able to see the evolution. We've seen some that aren't completely done. Uh, this is the occasion to show you what we've been working on. Let's work. Let's start with the Kra. Let's go. I want to start by specifying. Hold on. Close everything. Get rid of everything. Come on. <laughs> I just wanted to remind you, first of all. I wish I could hydrate. <laughs> uh, so next week everything will be on the forum very soon. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's let's put a break. Not only will you be able to share all your feedback on classes in the forum or elsewhere, but also at the end of the live, you will have at your disposal a Q and A, a questionnaire, uh, a uh, like a poll. 
and we want to see what you found, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want us to enhance. If you play a certain class, did the class that we present to you, uh, up to, is it up to your expectation? Do you like it? Because another time, we've already shown you it in the um, evolution between 20, 21 and 24. But we want to say that your feedback is taken into account. It's really important. And not only we will have a poll. Uh, at the end, but also you will have a forum topic that you will be able to contribute to later on. We want to hear your feedback. Unleash the crowd. Oh, what well, I wanted to say before, like I've said earlier, the um, characters were straight and static, and we had a class posing. We will have the. Uh, uh, you will see a lot of the changes we've talked about. We haven't talked about anything that is customization and things. So don't, don't, don't say anymore. Don't say anymore. Don't say anymore. <laughs> we'll see everything later. So the Kra. Let's start with the Kra. There's a lot of conversation that was had about the nose on the Kra, which was the sticking point. No pun in that. So there are faces where the face, where the nose is pointy, and others not. So in every little class that you can see, look at the details about the face. Uh, because it will give you indices and uh, an indication about what we will talk about later. So pay attention to the details of the class. Why does she not have a big nose, uh, the female? I don't know, because uh, otherwise it, it's something that could be changed depending on feedback and things like that. It's a weird question. Why the hell are they asking? Why does that? <laughs> right. Anyway, we've shown you one that is... That Two, only two of them have big noses, so uh, I don't I don't have it by memory. Right. In any case, just look at the hair. Look at how many, how much variation, how many different individual individual hairstyles we have compared to what we have now. So the creation phase of a new character in Unity will take a lot of time because you have too many customization. Now you can see the faces. We have eight basic faces, which is the minimum that we had to have on every classes, but now we will have a lot more. Oh shit, I'm spoiling on what's coming later. I mean, you can just, the thing you can spoil right now is that we have a sixth color of customization, which is, uh, on, on, on two, three classes, we had little items like a belt or something like that that you couldn't colorize on the item. But now you will be able to colorize and customize everything on your character. Right. Right. One minute by this one, quick maximum. And move when we move past one. This is the eye. This is what the eye up looks like. We've had a lot of conversation about the eyes earlier. Pay attention to all the types of face, the sh body shape. Look at all the customizable items that have shown up. So we have some eye ops with uh, retinas or what do you call them? The uh, pupils and others without or what do you call the thing. The eye thing is also a new addition. Some have it, some don't have it. Look at the details that make the whole character. And then the coming back of the gold tower hat. This is something, a lot of lore, a lot of pleasure to see this type of hat come back in the game. Uh, so we had four faces that were rather neutral, nice faces. Yeah, and then we had four evil ones. And as we've said earlier, the expressions will change. Whatever face you have, they will change the animations of the face. So we have less impetus to have an, an, an angry looking face because you can be angry regardless of the face. But we try to stay as close as possible to the faces that you already had. And the idea is... Uh, well, we can spoil it, but you'll have a lot more things that will arrive and you will see them just now. I, I must admit, Fekka, I have a, a really, I really like the third one. It might be one of the character that will, uh, that I will pick. <laughs> uh, for her, the girl likes the, the, the fourth Fekka with the big uh, bunny ears, which is really, really, really cool. Well, as the French say, and I'm quoting them, it's uh, les goûts les couleurs. Everyone has their own preference and taste. So on the Eka flip, I have a big preference for the female Eka flip who are much, much cooler. I rarely play a female character, but the Eka flip, I think I will break this habit and look at it. 
to answer one question that was on the chat we do conserve the question in the translation the basic colors of the one that you know the basic colors of the characters as you know them right now will be staying but when unity comes there are more details that you can change on the character itself there's less things that you can't access and you have more ability to create new looks and things like that and you will be able to see the difference between the Flash and Unity versions, obviously. What's a craw? <laughs> the Any is one of the classes in 2021 in the league that was um, talked about a lot. And so this was one of the classes that we've done a lot, of, uh, most of the work on, just because it was one of the most hated ones. So we've doubled the effort. And there are some that are really cool, good looking. Right, so there's 19 classes, and but it's still very pleasant to discover them from scratch, right? So all the customization options that we'll talk about just immediately after this, that will allow us to project ourselves on so many possibilities, which was one of the points that in Flash, Tophus, were rather limited. When you create uh, characters, it uh, was not a pleasant experience. You had four faces, four, four angry ones, four nice ones, and that's it. Yep. Boom. The most work that you had to do as a player was customizing your color. But now, ooh, -hoo, look at that. <laughs> look at the new anitrophs. That is quite cool. <laughs> the female one is no longer miniature. <laughs> the PC is running out of battery. Another tech problem. There you go, Gluto. Add it to your list. <laughs> is it plugged or is it not plugged? I might have forgotten to plug it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I will plug it now and let and leave you to come in the classes. The Anutroph. We haven't seen uh, Xel or not yet, Pock. There were a lot of changes on this one uh, because the skeletal body has changed a lot from Dolphus 2.0. So in order to make it um, work in every other animation, he had to be closer to the standard body shape and skeletal body. So the, the size of the character, we still conserve some small and big. So the Zellor remains a miniature and you still have a small one. The, uh, the Rogue, so you will still, wow, you will still be able to customize the size of your uh, class in some, like the Rogue, Anutroph and Zellor. Uh, Los Osamodes, what can we say about Osamodes? Right. There's a lot of um, play around the hat. The female Osa have a lot more variation uh, as opposed to the male one because the accessories are put in um, the forefront with the female one. Uh, we could have we could have added nope. We could have added the hat on the male one. Nope, we're not doing that. No, nope, it's private. I don't know what he means by private, but yeah, it might might be added later on. The Sacri, yeah, here's the Sacri now. Oh shit, let's have a look. What you need to know is all the body shapes have been standardized. So there is no head that is bigger than any other one. They're all working on the same mold. So same head size. So this will, this has, we've settled on this so that items look the best on all of them. This was one of the problems that we had on the 2.0 sprites, which, which means we had eyes that were up here. And so it didn't look coherent because they had different head size, but the same. Um, yeah. So whether you put a bandana on a small head, it just didn't look good. It didn't work. It was really difficult. But right now uh, we've standardized them. We have the same um, homogeneity on all faces. Holy shit, that's a mouthful. And now let's go to the SRAM on all faces. So the SRAMs. The, the Zellor will be smaller than other characters. Yes, that is true. SRAMs are absolutely badass, I have to say this. Is there a possibility? This is a feedback that we've had. Are you able to increase the size of your character it's very complicated it's very complicated we're still thinking about it it will be a big problematic i think um what did we say about this if we had to bring characters of different size you wouldn't have emotes you wouldn't have things like this that we're talking about now uh, to make them jump on a dragon turkey wouldn't be as much of a problem but 
the emotes and things there's a lot of elements that would break if we allowed you to do that that would pose problem but also we like to never say never it's a question that we've asked internally we've thought about it we've established the limitations and everything to do with it but we will have to work on it a lot more than we have right now in order to let you customize it so we're not saying never but we're not saying yes right now <laughs> i've seen sadie on the chat that is spammed a lot we want sadie on the client when it was released because it looked ugly as shit with the full facial hair but now we've reworked the female appearance so that it's one of the absolute best in the game and yeah sadie is absolutely insane this is me saying um we have profited for benefit from this uh, situation to see what other elements can we add to uh to add a little hat like a bit amelie ask this is an inside reference about an amelie which is a french movie and things like that to make it look feminine and very pleasant things like that right in any case we tried to bring personalities per design so if you pick a zelor looks completely different from the other one and the, the thing with the zelor is compared to uh, version 2.0 you had a different kind of a brown hair now we have a white hair on the zelor and we're still asking the question do we keep it the same size the same color and everything or do we make them go back to what they were on 2.0 and have them a bit brown you can customize it but on the base head we would like to sort of have a standard idea that with your feedback on it. White is good, but yeah. We will listen to what your um, feedback is, yeah. So if you... Uh, and now let's go to the panda. What the f... I hate the male ones. I had the female one. What the fuck? Ah, looks... Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> looks terrible. <laughs> They're saying the white panda is magnificent. To go back on the Zelor um he's not any thinner than any other if the zello is anorexic if you find him thin then all the other classes are because they share the same skeletal body this is the male panda the top female the bottom mask oh the mask it's lesobo the max the the plural of a mask <laughs> <laughs> that was a cool, hilarious joke in French. <laughs> Mask is one of the classes that required a lot of animation uh, as far as the face. But we thought it was going to be this one. But the panda surprised us because of the drunk state and things like that. But in any case, the mask has always been one of the most challenging as far as animation. Because you have multiple masks and things like that. We've adding, we're adding volume to it. Uh, should we have some uh, spoilers, some spell spoilers? We have done it generally on previous uh, lives. We might be able to show you a lot more on a brief, on an upcoming live. We can show you a little bit right now. We have uh, we have planned to show you a little bit after this. This is the rogue, the le maître rogue. They have. Frankly, they have a lot more. These are the classical eight looks. You can make more, obviously. Uh, but we will talk later on about the, f the upcoming features that will be arriving with Unity. So, after the Rogue, we have the Fogonaut, which we have shown you on, pre on previous lives. Do we not have the Rogue? <laughs> Normally, you should have the Rogue. <laughs> nope. The tech aspect, the, the IT guys did not have the, the Fogonaut. <laughs> we can show it on the tool, the tool directly. We have to show you Fogonauts. The internal lobby of Fogonaut did not do enough pressure, apply enough pressure to make it happen. <laughs> Shall we show you the Fogonaut now? In the tooling or? Uh, let's show it at the end, let's show it at the end. Do we have Elutrop, brother? Yes, let's go. Yeah. Don't don't prove me wrong twice. Cool. Well, the Elutrops have been completely redesigned and styled so that they look really cool. We like them. The hat on some skins hides the eyes. Some tiny details um, from the lore that have been added, which I think will please the player base. I think it is really cool. Yeah, so the one that hides the eyes, I think there is a consensus. A lot of people weren't a fan of it, but I think most really, really like it.
Is it possible to have a mode without hat altogether? In the lore of the class, it would be a bit annoying. <laughs> but you will see later as we will show you on the live. You can deactivate the hat. When you apply a hat or any sort of thing, it will completely move it to the side. It won't be like 2.0 where they will stack. You will be surprised. Stay tuned. From the Ellie Trop, we'll go to Hopper Mage. I think this is a very well designed class for the first time. I think this is really good. So the transition for me is less flagrant. Because these classes have had a more recent design as opposed to the ones that we know when we've seen from 2004, for example. So bizarrely, the Hopper Mage uh, was rather more limited than other classes which were older and stuff like that. So the Aleutrope uh, received a lot of uh, praise, makes complete sense. The Uganek as well, as we will see. Oh, let's go. There's the Uganek. It looks really, really cool. I think I'm going to go with female one for these. These are classes that have been made and created more recently as opposed to the IOP that you've known forever. So we had a lot more play with this. <laughs> the Uginak people are saying on the channel, the uh, uh, how are you finding them? Tell me in the chat. People are finding these cooler than what we have right now. So the faces are uh, have been adapted to a to an existing uh, mold, as we said, for every character, which is shared across all of them. But to have a snout on the dog will have to. There was a lot more work. To add, it's not easy to integrate a new detail that isn't a face, it's a snout. We want it to be pronounced for you to see it because it's part of the class. And also have it have a good interaction with items, emotes, animations and everything. So yeah, let's not dive into snouts and everything. But this has been the hardest, uh, the hardest thing to implement is to have a fixed body, skeletal body on all classes. But also have specificities and unique stuff about classes like the snout on this one. So combining those two. Has been hard, right? And the last one, let's end on this one the Forge Lance, the last class that we have seen that has a much wider shoulder pad. Uh, when we've designed it, we were already working on Unity, but right now we still wanted to give it a bigger shoulder pad, but with the limitations of 2.0, we couldn't do that. But now we have the final design. If you look at NPCs, they all look like this, but because of the animation limitations in 2.0, you thought you had the real Forge Alliance between your arms and hands, but now you finally do. This is the design that we had in mind when we've created it. And finally, with Unity, you will have it. Shall we do a Fogonaut very quickly? Now, let's move on to the tool, that um, a different tool altogether, the idle tool. And let's, start, let's show you the Fogonaut. They're just talking about where, where to find the right button. Ah, let's compare it with all the others that you've seen that was that were stood straight. So the Fogonaut will not have a favorite position uh, c compared to all the other. Whoa. Emotional damage! Whoa, whoa, whoa. No gifts, please. No gifts. <laughs> Hello, Andrea. Um, so the the face on the body is the right one. The Fogonaut... The Fogonaut will be added. You will see. You will see everything. The um, the image of all the Fogonauts. You will see them on uh, the written uh, document that we'll release later on. Knowing very well that the Fogonaut we have already showed it in December or January. Can't remember something like that. We've shown some animations. There was a good shark throw that we've shown you, but yeah, we've shown you a bit of all the planks. This is so you could have an idea about all the classes, vaguely. Um, what do we go on next? Um, uh, I'm a bit curious about at the level of classes, what you think he's talking to chat. So classes have, your reactions have evolved as we have shown the, the, the images. Uh, 
in the beginning you were very convinced and as we went along there was a lot more appreciation and excitement how did you find them how did you like them there were some classes that were more appreciated than others. The Anutra, for example, there was unanimity. Everybody loved it. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. The chat is just going crazy. We'll go back about this in detail. But as you said, at the end of the live, we will provide you with a poll. And you will be able to give us your um, um, your uh, point of view and things like that. And we'll have a forum post to tra centralize all of your feedback so we can read everything very easily and take our time. Plus the poll that we will link at the end of the chat at the end, which will be accessible. So you can directly give us your feedback on everything that you've seen now on the artistic direction and classes. I will put it on the chat and please do contribute to these things because they are listening. We've not only done classes, we've gone over every single bloody item in the game. <laughs> and we wanted to show you the first image illustration with various items. I don't have the exact precise number, but I will show you. So you can see the solo monkeys part of it. They came here. Let's show you some. We'll show you some others in the client, but we'll show you some here right now. So the idea is to retouch approximately 3,000 items, 3,000 skins between the hats, between the shoulder pads, between the shields, between the... There's a lot to work. It's a mega project, 3,000. That has been in the work forever. And we're seeing the end of it, thankfully. And this is the best feeling. At the end of every week, we think, oh, we're nearly there. We're getting there. We're getting there. And the idea was to show you a variety of skins, some of the most popular ones, and on a variety of characters. So you can see the marriage between the novelty of the class and also the rework of the items. So this is a, an illustration. So you have, what does it look like in your client? It's all good to see it here as an image, but let's see how it looks like on the client when you log in and play yourself. Let's start with the Sadi, for example. We were working with it earlier. So let's start with an eye up and add a, um, the Belladonna shield. This is how it looks like directly in the game. You can see the transformations. We're not going to show you all the items. We've got 3,000 as we said, <laughs> but we will show you a little bit of it. This is an Anaripsa. We wanted to show you the characters in the illustrations, how they look like in real life. So if you have any specific one, you could see how it looks like when it's animated. This is how it looks like. I've mixed and matched things a bit. And I don't know if there are some that will show you. Ah, oh, my favorite look, the Inky Veil. We wanted to see the Inky Veil and the Solo Monk. There it is, <laughs> in the back, obviously, no surprise. And if I understood correctly, it was Mary that did it in the past. And she did it with three strokes. It's, it was a cape that was done at the end of uh at the end of a session and it was one of the biggest hits in the game yeah a lot of you love it a lot of you wore it for ages i still use and equip in my characters i do have a little favorite though on the zelor oh look at that it looks really good look at that the only slightly negative point is it's not very well contrasted in the colors but holy shit i mean look at the um legendary item how it looks different right now the uh, corruption cape it's no longer like a, a flat flat thing that he has on <laughs> oh i'm a big fan of the new uh, royal gobble set which works really good it's really well look at that mumbles in french <laughs> Another question about the Zello. We will be attentive. I'm seeing it come up a lot in the chat. This is obviously why we're adding... Oh, I think my internet has died. What? No! No! Ah. Uh, this was to exchange with you and tell you... Uh, can we... I hate it when they do this. All three of them are talking at the same time and I don't know which one to translate. <laughs> Can you go back to the Inky Veil? So it is a subject of a big debate. This is how it looks like. It looks the same with a bit more volume. I think the angle that they shown it earlier made it look a bit wonky and things. Can we zoom in a bit to see it? 
it was a bit ah okay people were realizing okay it just looked a bit weird from that angle but it's still the same item with a bit more volume like that, i think this angle is the one that was posing problem maybe there's too much depth and things like that we could go over it and redo it yeah anyway we will go back over it i know again we are really open to redo or retouch items that you find a bit wonky so please do not give us this is ugliest feedback give us more arguments tell us what you find bad about it what do you want to change give us your feelings but describe them so we can do something about it not this is ugly and that's it <laughs> yeah when you say this is just horrendous it's not telling me what needs to change essentially this is a shrimp oh this is a rogue all right so this is a female ro a rogue it was poorly named they were they named it a shram i didn't name it i didn't name it <laughs> this is a female rogue incredible the dora the dora bora it's it's incredible when you have this much detail from every aspect of the animation it's really cool right and we wanted to see the animation of the items on the the, uh, the tool viewer. We want what we wanted to show you is what it implicates, the implications of changing an item. It goes really quickly. We take an item, we put it in the right spot on the head, and that's it. No, no, no. But the problem is that it takes a lot more than that. And we brought the best people to tell us about it. These are the people I've done the work. So in essence, you have, um, let's take the Raval hat, which is there, which is a um, colorable item. You can change depending on the color of your character. I wanted to talk to you about what you can do with the item itself. As we've said earlier at the beginning of the life, we've split the face of the character so that we can put as many things on it so i have a menu right here that you can see where it has every component of the head so the head is not one item so you have the uh, uh the little hair that is the hair is an item the ear is an item all the various components of the hair as well um upper direction hair down the nose you can deactivate the masks you can deactivate the ears each ear is a separate component. The hair at the top is an element. The, ha the hair, the bulk of the hair. You can see the little ears out from uh, the hair, which come and mingle with the hair. So you can deactivate the hair, for example, like we've done just now. And you can deactivate the back of the hair, and then boom, you've removed it. So the customization level is incredible. You can take bits of hair and add, remove, build on top of what you have. These are things that mesh well with pretty much all characters because most of them have hair and things like that. So uh, he's just removing bits to show exactly the level of customization. And for, oh, so, so for items, they had to do this with every item per face. So when you add a hat, for example, you have to customize the face so that it is coherent. You don't need to see the ear if you have a hat that covers the ears. So they've, yeah. So these are all the views that we have of the eight classes of the Fekka, eight appearances of the Fekka. So we've picked every single individual one of them. If you want to see an Enutroph with the hair, this is how it looks. So even Shram, it looks really good on it, this item in particular. <laughs> this rebellious hairstyle. And this is where we can remove or add things. So for example, if it's something, uh, long hair is a bit annoying on a certain class, we can just completely remove it. We can just deactivate it. Let's remove this bit. It doesn't look good on a Zello, for example. So that when you equip this hat, you lose it. And I just want to remind you, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items. So I have seen a message from, please don't do this to us on Kama. It's just copy and copy paste. All the items are already coded. It's not like that. It's a bit longer than we had anticipated in SM. 
um, it's hundreds of appearances on 19 class times. It's not just 19, it's 38 because we've got two sexes per class. And f and every character has five views. We haven't shown this in the past. But now you have five views. So face, slightly off center, side, three quarters and back, three quarters back. Yeah. So we have a lot more faces to optimize for within every client times uh, 19 classes times two sexes so you can quickly see when it comes to activate the activate things it's a very big work so when we do uh, on our parametering uh, a face or a hat or one hat it takes a lot of class so that we adapt it to every class every look every class and every face shape that you pick so there used to be a lot of disparities between sexes, between appearances, between classes. But now I think we will be able to configure this so that it looks good on every character. Now there's a question. Why using a standard? Why using a standard software instead of using a custom uh, software like Adobe Director? Well, it doesn't work like this because the standard software from uh, unity this is a tool that we have developed for our graphists so that it's much more powerful than you can just see and it's also do the animations the sound the transition everything is 100 percent made in ankama to suit our needs to make our skins and our animations and things like that uh, we won't work with licensed softwares for example to work this kind of things for us it wouldn't be practical for us so it's 100 percent customized it's 100 percent developed while we were making the unity port in and yeah so we always have little surprises and we're still working on the tool itself to make it better so it's with this type of tools that we have internally we're flexible we can change it very quickly rather than ask adobe to do it for us which will allow us in the future to double the speed of work and things like that and yeah. so for example the elutrope you can remove the hat and remove and it has hair underneath so that when you equip a hat you lose all of this for example It's the same tool for animation as well, uh, Gluto, the one made in-house. It's the same big tool that has multiple plugins, one for animation, one for transition, one for looks and things like that. So every one of the classes will have the same thing applied to it. For a Sacri, for example. Yeah. We can remove the little bandana, add it back. The bandana... Typical Sakri. A poll in the chat, uh, <laughs> which is more sacrilegious. An Osa without a hat or a Sakri without a bandana. And there is a little image that will arrive right now, which will talk about the costumes, because all these options that we have, the customization and things like that, we are going to link them to the universal skeleton of all classes. Now, we only have three in the game, but Unity will allow us to do a lot more of the costumes. I don't know if the tech department has. We've missed some, uh, yeah. So the slots, now we've added new slots. We have cut a number of items better, which were sort of on the same slot. So you couldn't have uh, shoulder pads and wings at the same time, but now you can. And this will please a lot of you who are uh, into their looks. And finally, oh my God, the chat is exploding right now. <laughs> so for example, in the costume, uh, So now the the feeling of the graph things are improving. We've seen some incoherences in the past, but we've remedied them right now. So you could have shoals, you could have customizable wings, 
they're no longer using the same slot so you can have better assembling in terms of cosmetics and have more options generally so you can separate the wings and the shoulder pads for example you can already do a lot more we've removed them from the costume slot and you also still have the costume slot so you can and you can do more important things with it one very important important thing you can have a cape and a bag on top you can see that one at the top this one like uh, some uh, bags like harvest bags that, that usually replaces the hat we could perfectly in terms of design make a cape with a hat on top with a bag on top of it and still remain coherent in the aesthetics so you could equip the two at the same time we haven't seen it earlier but we could do the same thing uh, we have a team that will show us. We could always put a uh, bandana on top of a mask, on top of a hat, so you will be able to create a lot more customization with. Um, so the high dye, the eye patch, the hat, you will be able to combine many more things. So if you take a Zellor and you add a little band, um, uh, a little hat, it arrives literally just underneath, so it looks good on the Zellor in particular yeah so i'm seeing on the chat the role play notion is coming up yes it will give you a lot more uh, customization to do your role play or or if anything just bring more life into your character more than you already could in the past so skin challenges and things like that they will take a different uh, size right now yeah <laughs> yeah, I can tell you there's a lot of work on the beta. It will be tiresome for everyone. Yours and ours as well. There'll be a lot of work on it. At the level of the integral costumes, because we've just mentioned them now. This is what it brings in terms of possibility. So, the costume... Uh, the integral costume creation has become a lot more seamless. Now we can do it. It's easier. Up, oh, sorry. Uh, the slot, the classical slot, remain. Uh, that we will add in packs and things like that. Uh, but now you will be able to, if you take the third costume, for example, the blue one, like the uh, fry ghost one. <laughs> you will be able to equip a different hat while keeping the bottom of the costume that will work perfectly well with it. So we're talking earlier about skin and things like that. You will have a lot more possibilities and it will be even cooler to combine things like that. I have a little spoil to make. Um, the, the, the pink one uh, in, the, in the middle, you know him very well. To have a little flame like that, an aesthetic one, we haven't talked about, let, let's spoil it, let's tell them all about it, let's explain. So, but in essence, thanks to Unity, the performance that you will be able to have, you will be able to have animated costumes overall. So you will be able to have a fire, an animated fire. We won't stay purely on static stuff, we are moving into um, animated costumes as well. Yeah. So, for example, we had a Dark Vlad costume on in our drawer for five years. It was in the client and everything, but yeah, yeah. It would be crazy to have an animated the Inky Veil. It would be crazy to have things like that. It would be insane to have animated specific. Uh, brilliant items that you guys want animated so in order to make animated items as an addition in itself it's just insane it's crazy it's brilliant it's something that we've done i've done this test in office 2.0 i've animated the dark vlad hat the moment you had 15 characters you add one more and it just goes crazy it just goes crazy it works really well at 15 the animation mwah, works perfectly 16 everything explodes so viva unity i can't wait for it we're excited for it <laughs> here we're talking about the integral costumes something that we've evoked the existence of which which is um existing faces and um when you talk about different planks of characters, when you're creating a new character, we show you um, characters. The, the face can go from what you recognize into something completely different. 
into something coming. Here, we talked about the echo flip. It can go very, very, very far. This is just one example of multiple that you'll be able to f test and see for yourself. Um, this is an example of what you can do. So you can have different bodies in different classes. So we'll be able to propose diverse heads and diverse bodies so you can make the assemblies that you want. The colors you obviously know. There's an extra slot that you will be able to customize as far as color goes. Uh, here, the faces were only showing you one, but I think there's an another example that we'll show you later, but yeah. <laughs> Someone in the chat is saying, it will take 10 years to create your character now. Literally, the creation of your character is an aspect of the game itself now. You'll be able to spend countless hours theory crafting your face, your look, your th on, the, on the ensemble, on the overall. You'll be able to create, create crazy customization on your character. These are examples of customizations. We're not on the basic characters anymore. You take a character, you start from a base that we've made, and you use this notion of customization with the tools that we have provided to completely change it. The Zello is surprising, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you will be able to do this in Unity with the Zello, for example. Do we want to add a hat on the Zello, for example? Do we always want to do that? Nah. It's not necessarily the hat that we want to add. It's um, the things that are drooping from the, this crazy level of customization. We're stoked for it. It's, again, I'm reminding you, it's not Unity. It's not just allowing us to make things prettier. It's the tools behind it, the updates, the things that are happening in the background that are allowing us to do much more with what we have, all the things we wanted to. So you'll be able to change your head, you'll be able to change your body. And I think it's the last one, it's the last one that we've prepared for you. So you can see, look at the level of customization. You have a female skeleton shram. Because yeah, it's something that we had. Yeah, you can do things like that. Where it is still, why is it just a male that has a, a skeletal body? Why not have the female one as well? Now, the male and the female one will also have the customization aspect of the class or to the class. So you can take them, whether you're creating a male or female. So the options, as we said, are unlimited. It, it's going crazy. It's crazy, to say the least. So at the skin level, it's just going to be mad. It's gonna please more than one of you guys, I'm certain. <laughs> it's convinced a lot of people that weren't convinced, we can tell already. Again, we shouldn't stop only on what we've shown you. Don't think that's it, this is all there is. We've completely revamped customization. We'll be able to add new slots, new faces. It's, that, it's just crazy. I don't know that he has the word to describe exactly what you can do. It remains to be seen what you can do with it. Yeah. And hopefully you will be able to make the character that you want. And I'm seeing a lot of congratulations in chat for the artistic team. It's great. We're pleased with the work. And there's a lot more that we want to show you, but in due time. There's a lot. There's a lot of doubt because... Uh, it's a big challenge and internally we were feeling like are we up to the task like look at the the amount of things that we will need to be will need to change the quantity of item things like that in essence we are excited to see you at the japan expo or the new beta when it's released it is we're really excited this is the global idea that we're working with is to give you this client in your hands and get fresh feedback on this uh, artistic direction change and it's a pleasure to be able to show you this finally uh, and we have the team of animators seven this is the entire team i wanted to add this little detail we have set we are seven animators and five artists globally working on this so three Kara designers global and four level designers we are a small team and we're managing an incredible amount of content with so many items and we're managing all of this with this size team so to redo a complete artistic revamp oof, big task and uh, we don't have it anymore on the screen but you could see the decor that is 
um, for the level designers, we've done a live on this before, and I've translated if you remember, where they had to cut every part of every map in order to animate them. We're not just laying back with our feet up on the desk. We're working really hard to bring you something incredibly cool. So we still have about in the vicinity of 50 to 100 uh, hats to work on, to work for all 38 classes. Um, there's a lot more work to be done. Little details like um, the braids and things like that we're still working on and the customization, the integration of those into the general look so that it's all coherent. Um, so the integration, the technical integration is underway and we're working on it. And so we could do a little Q&A session. I think, yeah, it's the occasion, yeah. Yeah. How is it going to work on the release? Yeah, how's it going to work? Are we going to lose the character looks that we have now? So globally, the idea is to be uh, very respectful of the work that has already been done by the players on their characters. We will communicate the date of the release of Unity, but it will be around December of this year. So the existing characters will either have the same exact configuration that they had before, or we will have a distribution of potions to reskin, to change your looks, to change your colors. I don't have it in, in my head. Yeah, like color potions and things like that. So that you have the ability to freshly customize your characters, to use all the new tools that you didn't have before, but you now have in Unity. So these are things that we are keeping in mind. We don't want you to feel like you've lost with this new update. We want you to have the pleasure of spending hours, tens of hours, changing your character, playing with the new tools in December. This is clearly something that we want to offer you, the ability to play uh, with the new tools. For sure. The hero mode, for those of you that didn't follow all the lives, is the ability to have multiple characters, playing characters, all of them in one client. We're still working on it. We don't have anything presentable to bring you. We're still in the research phase. It is something, again, that we will communicate to you the moment we have any advances to mention, to tell you about, or to show you. It is something that is happening internally. It's, we don't deem it worth it to tell you what we're doing right now because it is not, it won't, it's unlikely to be um, ready for the release of Unity, but it's something that we're all working on still in the back of our minds and in the team. We want it to be released at Unity, but we're not saying it's happening. Right, we've mentioned the, the FPS. Have we looked at the, have we done any FPS tests? Is it around 60? As I've said earlier, I have um, re answered very briefly to something, but we have to go back and redo the benchmark. This is something that we want to communicate before the full release of Unity. And it's something that we are thinking the beta will be seminal for, will be really important for you to use it, try it, and give us feedback about your machine, how it interacted with the game and things like that. But on one client that we will be able to show you very soon, it works marvelously. You don't lose any frames. We've used four to five clients, five players, and we've looked at the data, your playing habits, so that it's fluid for you. Uh, we think it's Perfectly fine. If you want eight clients to play, you will have to have a really good machine. And the constraints that we have in Unity will be different from the Flash ones. But the tools are up to grasp and we'll be able to help with that. Right. Who is... Uh, somebody asked, who is the producer of the office? It's him. It's Papino. It's the guy who we're having on Sunday, by the way. Have we explained the customization... Um, process or not in any case on the live that we have shall we we could do a little sequence to show you all the new options in the skin things like that <laughs> he has the accent term <laughs> i'm noting it now for the next live globally it will be very different and it will be so much better but it will be cool it will be much more advantageous uh, there's a question about the clothes like, oh, so there will be a new slot for cosmetic uh, looks, like, a, what, is, what do we call them? Um, ensembles. So you can have ensembles for your cosmetic looks. There will be a new NPC called Mary Lork. Uh, because in the past, we were three to do the decor and changes. 
it was freelancer, but we were two with Mary when we'd done Inca on him. So in essence, uh, what is happening here? I've missed this. Right. Right. So they're talking about NPCs that were actual people who worked in the company and they've turned them into NPCs. Uh, what other questions are there? Why not animate the gatherable resources? It will be done. It is something that we're working on right now. It has posed a lot of issues. The moment the gameplay enters in action, it's really hard to do classical passes on the animation and shadows and things like that. But it is something, it's a will that we have to animate the gatherable things. Are we able to gather all of our stuff in our inventory? Oh yes, there will be possibilities to add favorites on your inventory. So you start so you start losing them. They will be fixed slots at the top. It's like a lock, so you keep them at the top. And there will be new interfaces for you. You will be completely blown in the beta with what you can do with the inventory. We haven't shown the inventory. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, no, 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 don't tell them anymore. We need to do a live on the inventory, the interfaces and the cosmetics, all the things that we didn't have ready in December, but on the beta, holy shit, you're going to have so many surprises on the beta. The quality of life and things like that, everything's going to change because there's so many new added things. Are there the um, belts and boots, are there any new cosmetics for them? We have added a few things, like um, on the costume slots, we've added uh, things like in Flip City, where you can add uh, uh, little shoe, literal shoes that you can see from the outside. Oh, is is something that is Steam integration something that you're working on? Yes, yes, yes. yes. So the problem with Steam is. Uh, mono account because they only allow you to release one client but we're thinking about so that it is available on steam with um, um especially with new projects like waven and things like that we're seeing how it works with steam integration but it's not possible right now because you can't fire up four or eight clients you're only allowed one with steam All right on the beta let's give some concrete dates the date we will communicate it very soon, immediately after the Japan Expo. And the final release will still be in December. So, in short, we want to have an, a long beta phase. It's important for us to have it from uh, August till September because there's a lot of things to observe. It's a complete new client. It's a complete new technology and things like that. And we want to have the ability to have so much testing on it. And recently, we had the ability to do server-side tests. We are gathering the details so we can talk to you about them later. But Unity will be the perfect exact moment to do refactor redoings revamps of the server side as well not just the graphic side that we've shown you so in the beginning we will do import like a mirror in the production like a release and then some releases of new servers for rushes and things like that get ready to have a long beta version so that on the december release it is as clean as humanly possible um the ram leakage is is it still happening yeah that's the whole idea behind unity is to correct for things like that so we no longer have it on the client the memory leaks but it's something that we are continuously correcting for like the memory leak and uh, losses um all the problems that we had on uh, oh a new aura for legendary items it's something that we can allow ourselves now it's, it's something that we'll be able to add these are things that are clearly doable and easy to add but also you'll be you have the added benefit of being able to pick your auras on top of the classical ones that you have already in the game <laughs> the addition of uh, easy anti-cheat we are um, working on a sort of integration that is hard to talk about right now yeah we're, we're at the moment we're talking about the da the artistic design but we don't want to deviate from that <laughs> uh, it's not so on the decor part uh, when you zoom on decors um, it's just like flash. Let, let's have let's have a visual cue. So, when you zoom in on things that are visually, uh, we are thinking about adding exports of decors in HD. So a complete redo of them in better quality. 
but we still don't have the answer yet of whether it's going to work or not. It's, it is in the work, it's something that we're working on, and we will go back to you about it. This will add a lot more weight on the client, sadly. Just like Retro, with the addition of uh, the, the HD pack that we've added versus Legacy, it makes the client slightly heavier. So when you're downloading it, it might take longer and it will take more space, sadly. So, uh, yeah. If you have a, um, if you're subscribed, you have access to the beta. Is it possible to add a customized theme? Yes, no. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no. Uh, put the client back, come on. Right, let's show you. We've added new options on the settings. We've added new themes so you could have directly from your launcher. You don't have to customize or make anything yourself. You can, boom, straight. We've deactivated everything so you don't see all the new interfaces and stuff like that. <laughs> we will rework this in the, the background later on. Right, so you can see that you have themes, changes in colors and things like that. And there is a little button that allows you, whether, whether no, there isn't, there isn't at the moment. We have fixed panels of colors that you will be able to change and pick from. But, but later on, these are the themes that we've worked on internally. If there are any suggestions or propositions, tell us so we can integrate them easily before the launch. On Linux, is it... Oh, it's expected to be released on Linux as well. For those of you weirdos, this is me saying, not the, <laughs> the Linux people. <laughs> yes, we're working on the client for Linux, and yes, it is in the work, and we will have some news on it. Oh, we haven't shown, oh no, we haven't shown the class animation, the heliotrope and things like that. I've deactivated the hats and everything. Let's put everything back first. Right, heliotrope. Steam Deck, we have to do tests for the integration. I can't say anything right now, but the objective is clearly to have a client on mobile, uh, Linux, Steam, everywhere. These are the new animations for the heliotrope. Boom. This summarizes what we've said earlier. We could add the exp expressions on the animations of the attack. I call them the anim attacks. I'll refer to them as that moving forward. So you can clearly see it. The quality of the animation, the face, uh, every single element that makes the character, you will be able to customize and marry that with the animation of the spell that you're casting nowadays. This is a kick, a foot kick. You can see the face is also working and reacting. The animations are honestly classy as heck. The dragon flight you can see is, is really, really, really cool. They breathe in French. That doesn't need translation. <laughs> We're showing you very briefly, but it's really, a, it's, it's honestly a big change from what we had. We've repassed, we've redone everything, the skeletal body, the elements, all the work that we've done. Make it so that now the animations are more fluid, the customizable. Mwah. Oh, there's a little thing, there's, there's a little leak on the torso that chat has spotted when he's casting the spell, it just flickers. Thank you for pointing that out, we'll have to go over it and rework it. Right, so we've done tests. It's really complicated. Let's say uh, it's uh, it's not completely undoable. We've done a test on the weather. These are all things that we are keeping internally, but we can't tell you everything right now. Will it happen later? I really hope we will see. It will be it will be something that we can add to the thing. But we want the objective, number one, remains to deliver a marvelous version of Unity. Uh, whether we can have a day-night cycle later on, it's, some, it's a big project that we don't want to mess up the whole release on the basis of little technicality. So we're working on having something functional, brilliant to deliver to you at launch. And then it's not something that we can just add. It's not two or three weeks of work. It's a big project so if ever there is a version like weather night day cycle we will communicate it to you you'll be able to assess it in advance but it's not our priority right now but things like um, um, 
Christmas and stuff like that, the animation you used to, they will always be there. Uh, a question about the release of Unity. Ah, oh, shit, I missed the question. We, we will talk about whatever the question was. I promise that I will tell you when the beta is released. I'm not going to do this because I will get hit internally for doing this. But we will show you some things. <laughs> I'm not going to spoil anymore. On the release of the beta, I'll give you a rendezvous. But I will not communicate on this right now. I will not tell you any more on this. A 20th class? No, that's not happening. No, no. We'll wait until December, but no, 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 no. I'd really like, yeah, we need to have a control because 20 rhymes with nothing. Yeah. It's really hard. It's really hard when you want to integrate it into anything. Uh, 19 is not pleasant. If you have a grid to choose from, 19 is not perfect. 20 is better, but we're not going to talk about this. If there's anything to say, we will release it by the time Unity rolls out. Why not never any more new classes? Oh, no, 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 I didn't say that. There will be new classes, but not immediately and not for Unity. Uh, we nearly did that with a... Instead of the Hopper Mage, we nearly released something like a bird class uh, to, yeah, to fit uh, the narrative of, uh, what is it called, uh, the dimensional thing. Isn't, cla isn't the Perceptor a class itself? Yeah, we can consider it a class, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There was another project called the Progeniture that was going to be released instead of the old Eutrope. And yeah. It wasn't instead of the Hopper Mage, the new class. There was going to be instead of the Eliotrope. But yeah. Any new zones? We are thinking about it. We're actively thinking about it. A new hero server. Ooh, never. No, 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 no. Never, never, ever again. <laughs> There's a lot of things in the work, like little features that we want to integrate in Unity. But there's a lot more that we have... Um, they not, won't necessarily be there on the day of the release, but they will be coming. Uh, just like we said, on the hero mode, releasing many characters from one client, Unity will allow us to do things like that, but it's not something that will happen day one. It will allow us to do it. So the planning of 2025 will very quickly be full because we have so many ideas and we can do them now because we have new tools and things like that. So. 2025, beginning of a new chapter for Dofus. That's all I'm going to say. And I wanted to mention this uh, internally in the team. Dofus 2, when we started the project, we were really excited what we, with what we've done compared to Dofus 1. It's really cool graphically what we can do with new tools, but it's far cry from what we are able to do two years later. We uh, enhanced our tools. We enhanced our ability to create new things, new steps. Like when you make it, you think, wow, this is even better than we could do ever in the past. New tools like Dofus Pen that could do, that could allow us to do uh, uh, relief so you can add things in the first level. So things we couldn't do months before, we can do now. So the pace of change is incredibly fast. So even with Unity, we are already mind blown by what we can do now like animating water and things like that but in two years we will think and excuse my French it will be absolute dog shit it will be c compared to what we will have in the future and we will be even happier with what we can do in the future with the two so looking forward to two years from now <laughs> looking forward to the release and also two years from now and the new chapter the new things the new content we want to propose and things like that and we really really want to make unity a shining star to attract as many people and make it pleasant for you like a perfect transition into a new kind of dovers i've seen some questions about uh, whether the animations would make it so that fights take long oh obviously not but there is something interesting that we haven't shown on the tool, on the cool tool. <laughs> Who said French don't have a good sense of humor? So on the animation here, you can see, on every animation, you can see a moment that we call the label shot. That's called the label shot. That corresponds to the moment where you have the right to chain something after it. And the goal, when we've redone all the animation, is to have timings. So you can have a long animation, but you have a timing after which you can cast something in quick succession so that you're not taking too much time and you're not waiting for the full animation to end. It can, but if you cue something in after it, it will chain it. So there's something else that we've added. So the animation is always 
but at the front but we didn't want the game to have a lot more latency a lot more lag so we preferred to take exactly the same values that you have right now on the current version to make it so that you have the same feeling in the game with the new animations it's something that we have we are very vigilant to work on so that it's if the fights are quick in 2.0 we want to keep the same rhythm when you move into unity I see there's a question for me, but there's also another question on top of it because the the subscription price will it change when you go to Unity? There will not be any drastic change. There are big discussions internally. The fact is, we will stay on something that will always be affordable, so that you don't lose your advantages, the advantages that you have currently. If we ever have any more information, it's something that we will communicate immediately to you. But in any case, we are working so that it is always advantageous for you. And advantageous for you and affordable. And will it work on Mac? Yes, there won't be any problems. Windows, Mac, Linux, the client will, the client will work on all those. 10 euros per month? No, 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 no. We're not going anywhere close to that. No, no, no. We're not going times two. Forget about that, that's not happening. There's a question on bots. Oh, oh sorry, there's 50 questions on bots. So bots, as I've said earlier, we are working on a lot of things internally so that, uh, and also the Unity thing will bring us a lot of flexibility in terms of dealing with bots. But to communicate anything now, we'll put us at a, we'll put us at a dis disadvantage vis-a-vis -vis the botters. EC Easy anti-cheat, we have been completely put off by what has happened on uh, the, the game Thieves, something Thieves. The anti-cheats, they're very complex, it's a very complicated topic. We don't have a solution yet. We've seen a lot of problems with other games, and so we weren't, we've done a lot of tests, we weren't convinced with the results, so it's in pause right now. And we've seen other things that have happened in other productions, other companies and games. It's very unfortunate what happened to them. Um, yeah. It has... So, uh, Apex, uh, something Thieves. Thieves, in particular, half of their player base lost access to their account for, ha for weeks on end. So, we don't think it's the best solution to release right now. And we don't need any problems like that with our Unity <laughs> release. <laughs> <laughs> do we have any um, ah this is a technical question so uh, the animation are you using a new vectors or are you mo morphing to something new we've not changed the um, ah, I'm panicking this is so technical uh, so it's not directly vectorial so we have a loss in the game once you start to zoom on a decor or something you lose a bit of detail sadly we're trying to see if we can have an hd version of every element in the game so that when you zoom you're not losing any quality but we will see if the client will support it how much weight will it add how much work is it going to take we will something that we were thinking about it's something that we think internally we call it a cool tool a pick tool tool it's a tool it's a Unity project that is done completely internally, no external tools. That's why we call it the cool tool, something that we've devised for our needs that we can control. Right. I'm seeing something about the animation within fights. Do we have to remove animation? It's something that you no longer need to do uh, because it will not augment the duration of the fight if you have animations on. So our objective is so that you never have to remove. We will test it. We will stress test it in the beta to see if it's necessary to have a mode where you completely remove animations. Right. The goal is to exchange as much with you. Talk. Give us feedback. The features that work well, that don't work well, so that we can correct it right before the release in December. And we really count on your communication retro is it moving to unity no it's staying in flash the other question is music are they going to be completely redone we have a new beautiful orchestral version of all the music that we have we've integrated on some on some videos so if you go back on some of the cross monode the latest lives if there was any music pay attention you might hear the new orchestral music that you we've been working on also there was a live they've done on this music if anyone is interested what they show you how they make it this is something that takes a lot of effort because unity again unlocks new opportunities in terms 
terms of tools, dev mode, for those of you who know what dev is, that allow us so that we have Evolut uh, evolutive music that is dynamic and enhances and it works with whatever is happening in the map whether it's a fight walk you're nearing an end there might be at easter eggs one over six thousand chances to release a piece of music we have some really cool things on the music front and we'll tell you more summons we haven't prepared what it takes to show you the um, summon animations Summons, they've all been redone. They have completely been redone, just like we did with characters. I can note it now, so that if we have the occasion to show it to you on the next live, I will integrate it into the plan. It's a question that we're having come up a lot. Oh, do we have the right to abandon a quest that is ongoing? It's a question that's been coming up. It is a highly difficult thing to implement because of technical reasons. We have hierarchies of um, connections between quests. It is doable, but we don't know that if you um, abandon it, that it will work well generally that you'll be able to take it again and things like that Oof. i've seen a question about creature mode which will always exist in the next one in the fight it will not change and in the role play while uh, running around it, it will be on off switch it won't count how many people are in the map in order to go into creature mode it will be a switch you can flick it and you know like you can toggle it to go into the mode and leave it Will there be any cinematics for the principal, the primary quest? It's something that we're working on. You will discover in the Japan Express something that we really care about. These are options that will be linked to dialogues so that you can uh, send emotes and make them react, the NPCs, vis-a-vis -vis the dialogue. And we wanted internally to have a tool that allows us to put more... Um, scenery and things like that like wakfu that plays a lot around these things is something that we don't have at all in the office it's really complicated to have scenery as part of role play and dialogue it's something that i'm really interested in it adds a lot of life to the game but it's not something that is part of the package unity that is already full the package is full and the scenery the mise en place the, um, i don't know what to call it is not part of it we've talked about this in the beginning of the live Will the monsters be animated and things like that? So we will look over the designs. We will look family by family, but this will be after the release. So after December, we will go back and look at monsters. Pretty much all of them look one by one, reanimate them, give them idols so they can breathe when they're not doing something. Um, momentum, like when they move, transitional movement and things like that. So we'll go over everything. NPCs as well, we've mentioned it earlier. Uh, they will be lacking a bit of animations in the beginning. Some of them do now and will continue to. And as part of the dialogue, we will add a lot more things, like interaction with the dialogue. And I've seen a question on the finisher moves. You know, the animations that... It is not something that is uh, satisfactory in the way that it works right now. And it's something that we need to change completely into something else. Because right now, it's not working. Nobody uses it. Uh, it's something that can get you banned, kicked, and stuff like that. So it's not something that will stay in its current state and will transform it into something else so that people who have it a lot aren't at a loss because they've accumulated them and bought them and have something that is functional they can use. Uh, something about all greens. The all green market. Uh, will you still be able to sub in all greens and stuff in the future? Yes, nothing is going to change. Uh, the uh, haven bag, still the same. Something about the, um, oh yeah, so when you go to the next one, um, you will have potions that will allow you to re-experience the customization experience anymore. Will I be able to play eight accounts without lagging? As we've said, eight will require a good machine, and this is what the better will be. A marking point for us to estimate and look at the data of the different machines that you use, how they handle the game and things like that, and we will have... It's our best optimization tool that we have. It will be the hero mode. It's the ability to have all characters in one client and we're still thinking about it on one client. Will we always have maintenance on Tuesdays? That will not change. 
It will not change. They have um, improved a lot recently. Oh, come on, please, come on. Give me some credit, come on. <laughs> and as we've said, we continue to give you uh, amelioration enhancements server side so that different uh, technical problems that we've had uh, we've seen recently don't happen anymore so we continue to work on that and enhance uh, so the beta we will pass technical things during the beta so that we can enhance them during that period and see the so that the game performance is overall enhanced i'm sad to say alan but they are improving so tuesdays <laughs> so people are talking about a new slot for pets mounts mounts um, sea mules and things like that ah uh, this is something yeah to avoid having certificates and things like that this is something that we have to do break the entirety of breeding one day maybe but clearly not the release of unity Will there be new accounts or mono accounts? Yep, on the release, there will be new and mono accounts. We've done some tests. Uh, voice chat on the game. We have done some tests, but it's not anymore um, in the works. We're, we've abandoned this idea. Uh, can we see the new Haven bags? Nope, we've not, we've, we've, not, we've not thought to show you them today. But you will discover them in the beta, but you will largely see what you see now. We've not enhanced them massively. Another question that has come come back on the skeletal body of characters. Can we have like at least three formats? Big, medium, small? We've talked about this in the live. It's something that we'd love to have. We're still thinking about it. Maybe later. We have mentioned it earlier in the live. There's a lot of constraints behind. A lot of technical difficulties in allowing you to choose the size of your character. But phew, it's not something that's going to happen. A dev question, highly technical about API. is something that is difficult to see in the project in the very short term but i'm not against this is a question we will ask tomorrow uh, on sunday by the way we'll ask him on sunday and it will give us a better answer than what he's done now it's something it's a topic that he wants to reopen with the unity release so the new servers 20 uh, december uh, december this year with the unity release could we have effects and auras when you equip offices this again Unity opens the door to many, many, many things. It's not, it's not particularly something that is um, planned for this release, but it's something that is easy to do. So with Unity, it just becomes a piece of cake. But there are already auras. There's many of them now. But to add them for the offices, we don't say no. It's something that we can add. We just have to get around to it or think it. For, yeah. Some people are asking for a sort of effect around the body of the character to show that he's equipped in a certain office. We'll think about it. We'll see. Gzel Tiny. Yeah. <laughs> We've answered pretty much most of the questions I'm seeing right now in the chat. Will the appearance of monsters change? It is an objective to go back on some, uh, some sort of uh, old areas and completely change them. The fight poses up the posing in the middle of the fight, like to have your sword, depending on what weapon you have, whether it's visible on your side or not, the pose, how your character affects the character's pose vis-a-vis -vis what he's carrying or what he's having. These are things that we're thinking about. We have sequences we're working. When you, when you have this, it creates, we we're thinking about creating some sort of series of uh, like chains of idols show watch we don't have watches in the game stand hips touch the weapon we were thinking about various things like that that you will be able to experience during the beta is will we be able to play with the controller <laughs> it's not a priority for us <laughs> it's uh, an ergonomic addition that is already active on the client right now there are ergonomic options that exist so if you hold your um Ah, so if you click in the center of the map and hold it and then just switch to one side, it lets you change map. You already have that now. It's not necessarily things that we are we're not thinking. It's not a priority for us to add more things like that right now. But we know that we can add them at any time. And Unity allows us the reactivity to add something if we deem it necessary or if we have that. Yes, they, he said you have that. Now go and test it. Click in the middle of the map, hold, and then drag to one side. 
We want to see fight animation. Please, chat is asking. Please, chat. Shall we do one last question each? And then we would be at the end of our life. Shall we do that? Oh, Majin interfaces. I've just learned this today. There were so many changes to the Majin interface. Look at his face. Like, whoa, there's a lot. <laughs> we will be highly alert towards your feedback during the beta because it's a really important interface and we want to see how you find it. When uh, Peewee Boss. We have planned many new dungeons. But again, this is a completely different thing. I'm sure there's a, a better question to ask. Don't, don't let that be the last one for me. We've answered when the better is coming. A new way of recruiting. Something about Foganauts. I've put, I tried to put the question you've said. Will the que the colors be linked to presets? So we will do a special live just on this very topic. I can't explain this. Okay. Humility. Will the licensing problems that we... The instanced map, is it still going to be... Uh, so the fight maps will always... Uh, are still... It's still in the map. It works well. It is in the better. It works perfectly fine. And I know it's a bit weird in the beginning because you lose the role play side. You're not fighting on the map that you are stood on it and spend a few minutes in the game when you're chaining. The it's more fluid. It's better visually and it's better generally. Uh, half of the squares when you're in a fight are useless. So we've... We are waiting for your feedback on the new beta and things like that. We're, we're really waiting for your feedback and then all changes will happen as a consequence of everything that you will bring us for. No. And there was a question, when is the next Unity Live? You got to tell us. So, first of all, uh, the level of the next live. I'll talk to you about something else before. So, we have the Japan Expo that is happening from the 11th to the 14th of July on which you will ha have a fully new fight on the client unity that will show you a heck of a lot of new novelties, new, new things. We're still debugging it, but it will be ready for then. So you will be able to fight a Necrome and fight back, push back an invasion. So the fight is really stylish. And when it comes to the next live, we'll do it immediately after the Japan. So the 15th. We will give you a rendezvous for Unity. We will show you the fight live. We will show you the fight of the Japan and all the new features that we want to show you, like the reskins, the summons. And I think that live will be top. And you bet we're translating it on this channel. So on the 15th of July, we will show you all the new spells, all the new animations of every class and things. And then the beta will open. We will reveal the date during the Japan Expo of when the actual release will be. And lastly, the poll, which should be available. Uh, I'll put it on my channel as well if they add it. Which will allow us to exchange with you about this uh, design thing that we've just put right now, right? This is the poll. So the idea of it is to gather all of your returns, feedback on this very live that we've done right now, everything that we were able to show you. Please don't hesitate. Go there, show us. You will have a forum topic in which you will be able to give us a more complete look. So the ideal really is if you see something that you don't like in the data, tell us why you don't like it. Is it the form, the size, the depth? Don't just tell me I dislike it. It's ugly as shit. You should die. Don't do that. <laughs> tell us exactly what it is that is bothering you about anything and be as specific as possible write long paragraphs just be as specific as we can so we can do something about it thank you very much both of you for being here with the lives it has been a while that I haven't seen you both together since last December we tried to get you both in the last live but here we are thank you very much it has been nearly 10 years that I haven't been on the live the guy in the middle yellow Thank you all. Thank you all for those of you who followed us. Thank you for all the exchange feedback questions. I think we have a lot to debrief that we from from what we've said from two hours of life. 
two hours of life. Wow, that's really cool. So we have a lot to debrief, a lot of the exchange that we've had today. We need to mull over them. And then we will see you at the Japan Expo for those of you who are coming. Otherwise, on the 15th of June. The 15th of June, for those of you who want to come to the live. So the Japan Expo, we wanted to see something. It's going to be cool. I, I, I can tell you it's going to be really cool and awesome. And try, but really, it's going to be freaking cool. <laughs> for those of you who come during the Japan Expo, you will be able to see the live and test it yourself. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'll see you on the next one.